Welcome back to Copper Star Precision, the channel dedicated to getting you more points at your competitive shooting matches. We're continuing on with the NRL 22 Course of Fire for November 2022. This is stage two in the booklet. It's called two by one by four. I'll read the stage description here. Starting position, standing rifle and all gear in hand, mag in action option. On the start signal, the shooter will engage the large target with two shots and then the small target with one shot in the following order. Each tank trap tip, shooter chooses the order and then from the rope supported by the legs of the tank trap. Note, the tank trap will have a rope tied on its legs to create a rope position between the lower legs. There is a restriction on this stage. It says the rifle must only be supported by the rope and not directly supported by the tank trap leg. A front bag may be used between the rifle and the rope, but not between the rope and the ground. It's a 12 round stage. So what they mean by that is you can't really take a big bag like this and then just have the rifle sit on the bag on top of the rope. Uh, we are gonna use a bag a front rest here. You don't have to, technically. Uh, I think it gives you a little bit more stability, uh, depending on the rope. This is a pretty thick uh, half inch sort of uh, paracord type thing. Um, it depends on what you have. I mean, it shouldn't be a piece of twine, but you never know. Um, I think the strategy here is pretty similar to most tank trap stages. If you have only 10 round magazines, you'll have to incorporate a mag change somewhere, and I'll, think, I'll show you where I think that will uh, be the best. But I'm just going to run this with a, a single bag. Uh, I might have this uh, stand by for a rear support when I'm using the rope, but this is just a pint sized game changer with heavy fill. So all I want to talk about here is kind of think about your positioning. So the rope is between two tank trap legs. So it's not going to be this, this leg of the tank trap is not going to be head onto the targets because when you're looking through here, you would hit the front part of this leg, the bottom part. So you'll probably have an orientation like this or 180 degrees of this. So you're probably gonna have a tank trap leg way out front, one behind, and then one off to the side. So I think what you should do is probably start with the front one, because you wanna end up in this back area, because that's where you have to go to anyway. So to sort of conserve movement and conserve time, my strategy would probably be to engage this tank trap tip first, and then come straight back and do this, then go there, and then at the bottom. And at the start of the stage, if you need an extra magazine, all your gear has to be in hand. But have an extra magazine in your hand and just simply drop it right next to this tank trap and do your mag change for the last three shots because you're going to get down to a position. The mag will be right there. You can grab it uh, and basically uh, do the mag change right from the position that you're shooting in. So I think those are ways that you can help conserve uh, movement. Luckily, it's two targets, 75 yards. So we just dial our dope and our parallax and we don't have, we, you know, set it and forget it. We don't have to change that. I will say though, I'll put the target sizes up here. That second target is a challenge. The first one's a challenge. Uh, the second one is, is pretty small for that amount of distance. And with the environmentals and wind, that might be a difficult one to hit. Luckily it's hit or miss move on. Um, so how I would run it would be something like this. I keep my bipod on for balance. Um, I have a 15 round mag for this, so I don't need a mag change, but at the start signal, let's just pretend that this is my extra mag. So start signal goes beep. I'm gonna drop this here. I'm gonna come up to the front tank trap leg, get a nice purchase on the bag using my left hand, holding the rifle, pulling it into the bag. Now, when you're in the front position like this, depending on how the tank trap is set up, you can actually kind of like lean on this, you know, get stable. You can put your elbow on this, this arm here. More points of contact is always better. Nice and super stable position engage so i'm going to engage three times again kind of position your body so you can kind of brace yourself against other parts of the tank trap um, so then what we're going to do is we're going to come backwards now this is also extremely important for safety we don't want to break the 180 rule or the 170 rule you should not be swinging your muzzle in either direction so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pick up straight up look where i'm going keeping the muzzle up and down range the entire time Get back here. Now back here, we have a little bit more freedom. What I always like to do is wide stance and then just come into the rifle. Legs are straight and locked. Again, using this hand, grabbing the bag and the rifle, pulling everything towards my shoulder. Super stable here. Deep breath, squeeze, engage. There'll be three shots from this position. And the reason that you want a wide stance, one, so that you can get low enough if you're shorter, um, it's easier. If you're taller, you'll have to probably stand back and bend over a little bit further. But you want your legs locked. Just try this at home. Try and do a little squat here and see 
how much your your scope moves through the reticle. I mean, it's really hard to balance on muscle. We want to lock these legs out as much as possible so that we don't have any muscle fatigue or any influence and wobble from muscle. We want skeletal support, bone on bone contact. So I'm locking these out, coming in here. This is rock solid. Rifle's not moving. Okay, three shots from there, same thing. Pick it up, bolts back, come over here. Repeat the process. Again, legs locked out. <sighs> Control the breathing, squeeze, release, engage three times there. Now, same thing, come back, come down. I'm gonna use a bag here. You could probably get away with just using uh, the rope um, if your rifle's balanced enough. I think this, this bag is nice because of its shape, it can really wrap around thin objects. So depending on the stage and how it works, I'll put that there. I'm gonna snake the rifle in. I'm gonna get down. I can use my hand as rear support. I could have something here for rear support. This is where I would do the mag change. You know, take the mag, put it in. If you only have 10 round mags, this is super stable here. Engage, engage, engage. When you're done the stage, obviously bolt back, drop the magazine, show that everything is clear, and you're good to go. So the only challenges here are the movement. Staying safe is important, obviously. Don't flash anybody, you'll probably get an immediate um, stage DQ, match DQ. So don't flag anybody during your movement. Think about where you want to start because you're going to have to end up here. So I suggest getting the front tip furthest point away out of the way first. And then depending on how your tank trap is set up, pick one of the back two that makes the most sense. Um, in this case, I wouldn't go from that front tip to here because I basically have to walk all the way around. Chances are if I walked around the other way, which would be shorter, I'd probably be stepping into uh, past the firing line, which would be a big no-no. So just plan your sort of uh, method of attack before the stage is laid out when you see the setup at the at your match so pretty simple stage one distance like i said so parallax and dope is not going to change build good positions again in these positions here locking out skeletal support uh, for for these kinds of positions and then here again finding a way you know you can even sit on this leg here uh, in the position that this is in so you're gonna have to find what works for you depending on how the stage is set up but more points of contact is better. Skeletal support is better. You can do the mag change at the bottom because you're gonna do nine rounds and you should all have 10 round magazines. You can do nine rounds, leave the mag at the beginning of the stage at the bottom, makes for a quick and easy mag change there, saves you time. If you like these tips and tricks, I hope they help. Uh, and yeah, if you like them, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know how you do it at your match. There'll be match footage after this Sunday when I go participate in my local match to see if these things actually work in practice. Um, so we'll see. But if you have any suggestions, let me know. Until then, as always, score more points.